Hey guys, it's Joel Perryman, the Financial Planner student, and today we're going to go through, this is actually going to be going through a review of my week one at university, which is really cool. So uh, for those that don't know, I am a financial planning student. So whole reason why I got into doing this YouTube channel was so that I could create videos for you guys to help you with your finances, to help you with your everyday to day life and, and being able to manage your money. And the other reason was mainly to actually help myself with regards to uh, learning more um, throughout my uni process and, and also being able to give you guys a bit of a taste of what I go through when it comes to, um, uh, I guess, a week by week um, rundown of what happens at uni and how I go about studying and and this is also going to be good because I can teach you guys some of the concepts and the topics that we go through each week and I can look back on it as well and use it as a little bit of a, a way of studying too which is cool. So week one I am actually uh, first off like I said I'm doing a Bachelor of Business uh, looking at into majoring in financial planning uh, and I'm studying with uh, I don't know if I should be able to, I, you know what, I won't mention the name as, uh, um, uh, you know what, who cares, I'm studying with the University of South Australia, I'm doing it online, 100%, I'm actually doing it part-time, so this study period, I'm only taking on one subject, um, so really important that you guys know that, uh, and that is because I run a business, I run a gym, um, I have my own PT business and nutrition online coaching business as well. So I'm pretty busy. Uh, so being able to take on a full, uh, full-time full study load probably wasn't the best time for me to do that. Uh, but who knows? I might be able to rip through the content pretty easily um, whilst being able to maintain everything. So we'll just see what happens from there. Uh, so if there's any movement going on, um, I'm actually uh, just chilling in my bed at the moment, which is the perfect part about... <laughs> about being able to give you guys some content and just be really genuine. Um, that's all I really am, and I'd really love to be as genuine as possible. So let's just rip right into it. This is week one of accounting for business, so it's probably not the most interesting topic. However, it does interest me because it does pertain to uh, a lot of things that happen in my life and in business um, because one of the things is accounting is a language for business. Um, from what I've learned so far in the first week, it's been interesting because you can also take it and relate it to your personal life as well, which is really, really cool and really interesting. So let's get into it. The first thing, the first concept that I need to understand when it comes to week one and the main concept is essentially that assets equals and this is just a, a generic formula. Um, there's no reason behind it, in fact. So let me just tell you what it is first, and I'll go through it a little bit more. Assets equal liabilities as uh, liabilities plus equity plus income minus expenses. So you, all you have to remember for this is that assets is a left-hand column, and then your expenses, income, which pertains to the equity, and we'll go through that a little bit soon as well, um, is essentially on the right-hand column, and then your liabilities plus equ equity is all on the right-hand column. Left-hand column is debits, right-hand column is credits. Okay, so that's the main gist of what you need to know there. Um, again, there's actually no reason as to why they've done this. Um, they specifically have said that you have to get rid of um, all logic and just remember that it's just a language and they've just, it's like someone coming up with the word hello. Uh, there's no reason behind us saying hello as a welcome, it's just the fact that we say it. Something as simple as that. Okay, so you've got the, the formula, which is essentially assets equals liability plus equity, and then you add on plus income minus expenses. Um, so, how would that relate to real life? So let's look at a house, for an example. If you own a house, uh, you owning a house is an asset. However, the mortgage that you pay on the house is a liability as you know that the asset is something that you control right here. It It is a physical entity that you control and you believe that in the future, you will have future economic benefit from this entity 
as the house because you believe that in 25, uh, say 20 to 30 years, you believe your house price will increase um, and that it is probable that that will happen. That's what an asset is essentially. And for liabilities, the exact opposite. So you know that uh, you don't have control over it, but you know that there will be, um, for an example, the mortgage that you have is controlled by the bank. And you know that you have to pay down that mortgage and it is 100% true that it will happen most of the time, apart from if you've deferred due to the pandemic, of course. But you know that 100% true is that you have to pay down that pen, uh, that mortgage every month or every fortnight, depending on what you do. So that's a liability. So therefore, if your asset increases, your liability will increase as well. Hence the reason for asset equals liability. Then where does equity come into it? So the equity is what you pay down as a deposit. So for an example, you might, um, but you paid $100,000 to the bank as a deposit. And what will happen is that goes down as equity because you put down the money into the house, okay? And that asset that you had, which was cash, is now gone into the house, which then becomes equity, okay? So for a quick example, $500,000 is how much your house is worth as a, as a hypothetical. So $500,000 is an asset, debit, okay? That equals liability of $400,000 is your mortgage plus the equity that you put down for a deposit is 100,000. 400,000 plus 100,000 equals 500,000. Therefore, we have a balance of assets equals liability and equity. Okay, so that's a real good little, uh, an easy way to understand it, which is cool. And like I said, that's cool to know that you can relate it to your personal life as well. Okay, so that's the biggest thing that you need to get out of week one. And understand, of course, there's a lot of other different things and, and there's a lot of other definitions and stuff you need to understand too. Um, like I said, income, it is the it essentially means that when your income increases, your equity increases, hence why it is on the credit side. And expenses are the opposite of income. Therefore, expenses decreases, your equity decreases as well. So if it pertains to equity, it's always on the right-hand side. So that's why income and expenses are on that white right-hand side as well. Um, all right. So obviously, there are also quite a few statements that I've had to learn about, such as the balance statement, um, profit and loss or income statement, as well as change of equity statement. Um, all of those things will come a little bit more down the track, um, but I just had to sort of get a bit of a gist of them and what they are. Um, balance statement essentially is pretty simple when it comes to balancing uh, your accounts. It essentially is at the period in which you're looking at the accounts. So um, for an example, you, you can't balance something over a period of time. Um, so you can't use an accounting period for that example. Um, you have to make sure that it is done on the day that you are doing that balance sheet, uh, bal creating that balance sheet, for an example. Whereas the change of equity and the income or the profit and loss statement um, can be done over a period of time, which is generally done through an accounting period or through a um, per annum, essentially. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, this is one of my favorites. So, it, essentially, in week one, we go through the decision-making model, okay? Um, and it's a process that we do subconsciously most of the time, and we actually do it quite often. And I think this is really cool because I probably should have started with this because this is the more interesting part of the, the week one topic. Um, essentially, you have a decision-making model that you have created, which accounts accountants have created that happens um, when you're making a financial decision, but you can do this from everything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a financial decision. It could be a relationship. It could be uh, the fact that you're wanting to go for an overseas holiday. It could be anything. So what is it that will make or help you with regard to making that decision? First off, you need to establish a goal. You need to establish the fact that you want to be able to do that thing. Um, then once you've established the goal, then you have to make sure that you can gather as much information as you possibly can 
around that goal and how to achieve that goal and plan towards it. Once you've gathered and researched the information, that is when you have to understand the consequences of making that decision. Like, for an example, if you want to go on a Europe trip for six months, it's a goal of yours. It's a goal of mine. I want to go to Europe for six months. That sounds amazing. And you gather as much information and you research as much as you can. And then you try to understand how much it's going to be worth and how much you might need to save. And you you realize that, okay, I need around about thirty to $40,000 to get me through the six months and I might have to take up like a small part-time job while I'm over there or I might have to make sure I'm not going living the high life and backpacking and all that sort of thing. Uh, and if you're okay with that, if you're okay with those consequences and sacrifices, that's okay. But then there's also the fact that, okay, I have a house. What do I do with the house while I'm away for six months? Or you might have just got into a relationship and you're like, well, six months is a long time if I've just started this relationship. If I leave next week, the relationship probably won't last. And it's all these things, all these consequences that might actually come up that you need to really start to understand. Like a pandemic, for an example, that's a consequence in itself. Um, obviously, something that is out of your control, but something you do have to understand, okay? And then once you've been able to, once you're okay with consequences, that is when you truly start to look into it and you decide to take action. Um, on the flip side of things, so that's what I've learned from accounting uh, in week one, on the flip side of things, there's actually a model that I like as well, which is called the UDA model. Um, it's observe, orient, decide, and then take action. And it actually is funny because it sort of uh, is very similar to what they went through in week one with established goals, etc. So observe, observe essentially is to uh, essentially to understand and observe your surroundings and observe what is happening. Um, for an example, right now we're in a pandemic. Um, so observing that and knowing, okay, so I might need to change. And, and that's what orient, orient is or orientation, um, orienteering is being able to change your decision-making process and understanding that, okay, I'm in a pandemic now. So, and this is where it gets really cool is I can't go on a Europe trip right now. So I might need to change, change the, um, the date, you might need to change the, oh, what do you call those pins? You know, the bobby pin, nah. Um, can't remember what they're called exactly, but you need, might need to change the marker per se, and you might need to just extend your goal a little bit, make it a little bit longer, because you need to, again, observe the situation, understand what's going on, and then orient it. That's when you then need to decide, okay, based on the, the current circumstances, I know I can't go, but I know that I, in two or three years, there'll be a vaccine and everything should be okay. That's when I'll go, and then you take action on that goal. So that's the UDA principle, and I think they both go hand in hand, which is really, really cool. Um, obviously, UDA is not about accounting. It's about being able to understand the broader picture rather than just being very limited and focusing on the one goal or one aspect. Um, so I think I, I think putting them both up together is really, really interesting. It's a really cool aspect of way, a good perspective you could take into it. All right, so... That's essentially week one. That's essentially what I've got out of the concepts of week one and understanding it. Um, and to be honest, it all comes down to that main formula that I went through at the start. Um, so for future me, when I am looking back on this video and doing some study, week one is all about assets equals liability plus equity plus income minus expenses. Okay, uh, I think I've pretty much got it all actually. I don't think I've missed anything. No, nah, as at a point of time, period of time, yep, looking good. All right, so guys, that is essentially what I've gone through. So my week, what it looked like when it was going through uni was I probably read, I've read about four chapters, um, so it took about two hours uh, to read through quite a, an extensive range of chapters. Then we had about 
an hour and a half of lectures as well. Week one essentially had the most content in it out of the 10 weeks. Um, so it was actually pretty rigorous. Uh, I spent around about 10 hours going through all the content and doing the quizzes and the case studies. Um, so I spent about yeah, probably about two to three hours doing the readings, two hours doing the lectures, and then I did around about an hour and a half doing the exercise and the case studies, um, and then about another half an hour on the quizzes as well. Um, so yeah, so really cool, but we'll see what happens in week two, all right? I've already started reading some of the content, and it looks pretty cool. Um, a little bit drier than week one, but we'll see how we go. All right, guys, so that's a little bit about week one on the accounting for business side of things. Um, so looking forward to getting into week two. Let's do it. So make sure you like the video as we wanna try and spread the word, spread this video around YouTube as quickly as possible. And by liking it, your the YouTube algorithm helps to spread this video more quickly, okay? So in that way we can give more value to more people and give them the opportunity to learn more about financial independence and learn more about even trying to retire a little bit earlier. Um, make sure you subscribe as well. And once you've subscribed, hit that little bell button so you get notified every time I put out a new video in the future. Okay, guys, awesome work. I'll see you soon.